Hello and welcome to episode 31 on the Red Bra Project channel. We are here tonight with an incredible guest. We have been talking about her, not really about her, but you know how excited we are to bring her on and chat with her. And before we introduce our guest, Tiffany, Shauna, how you doing? It's so good to see you. It's good to see you as well. I'm doing great tonight. Um, I'm ready for spring and I feel like it's finally here. I think spring came a long time ago, but the weather is finally catching up to spring. So Boston takes a little bit of time to thaw out. So it's good to hear that things oh, yeah. are finally blooming around there. <laughs> ah, how are you doing? Where are you tonight? Great, Never, great. Um, actually kind of a little friend. behind the scene action. I was outside. We just arrived in Oregon and literally a rainstorm just, just came through. So we hit stop and we re, re all went indoors. So here we are. So. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we're so excited to sit down and chat about um, an unconventional lifestyle, but one that is definitely held close to her heart, and she does it so beautifully, and I'm not going to give it all away, but I am so excited to introduce our guest tonight, Tiffany Allen. So she is going to chat a little bit more and share with us about where she's from, um, what's kind of unique about her lifestyle, and then, yeah, take it from there, Tiffany. Okay, so I'm Tiffany Allen. I am a mom of two girls. I have a two and a half year old and a almost five month old. And that seems crazy to say because I'm pretty sure I just had her yesterday. <laughs> um, but we, um, we currently live in North Texas, uh, but I'm originally from Charleston, South Carolina. So I'm, I'm a Southerner at heart. Um, but my husband and I have been married for seven years. I believe we got married real young had our daughter about three years after we got married and um we we've just always really enjoyed uh, a different lifestyle we love to travel um we don't like to be really pinned down um i grew up military so it's important to me to not be stuck <laughs> um so about two years ago we built a tiny house and we live in a about 330 square foot tiny house with our two girls and we love it. Um, we have really enjoyed it. It's been um, a learning curve, but it's been one that we find incredible. And we, we really like to per, like help other people understand that, you know, you don't have to have such a large space to, to be happy and to enjoy your family. So um, I'm also a full-time photographer. Um, I mainly shoot family and product photography, which is really interesting and fun. But other than that, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> other than that, I feel like that's huge. There's so much there. <laughs> so my first uh, question. So I have so many questions about this tiny house. Like, how does this come to be? Do you tour other houses? Did you have a friend? Like, obviously there's a lot of TV shows and things out there, but like, where did you catch this, this bug to want to do this? So it started out when we had our first daughter. Um, I was working full time. My husband was a full time youth pastor. Um, and I was working in a telecommunications business and, um, I went on maternity leave, had my little girl and you know, that six weeks, eight weeks rolls by and you're like, I got to go back to work. And then you're like, I can't go back to work. <laughs> but I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. So I went back to work, um, for about three months and that whole three months, it was my husband and I like, how can we figure this out to where I can stay home? How can, how can we do this where I can stay home? What can I do to make money at home? Cause I can't do it. I can't send her to daycare. It was just, um, I had some pretty tough postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression, and it was just not, it was not a healthy situation for me to go back to work. So we kind of crunched numbers and we were like, okay, if we get rid of the car, you know, we'll have enough money for me to stay home. But that was false. It was not, <laughs> not good enough. So we were like, okay, we can do it if we didn't have a house payment, but how can we not have a house payment? And I just, one night was like, well, um, let's sell our house. We owned a house at the time. We had just renovated it. And I said, let's, let's build a tiny house. We're both handy, handy. <laughs> we, we can do it. In quotes. And my husband, yeah. My husband was like, no, we cannot, we cannot build a tiny house. It's like, yeah, we can, we can do it. We can figure it out. So, um, two weeks later we put our house on the market and it sold in three days and then we were homeless. So <laughs> we, 
We moved in with my in-laws and it took us five months, but we built a tiny house in our front yard on our own and it was definitely a learning curve, um, but we're really proud of it and it, it brought us together very quickly. <laughs> That is incredible. So when you say you built your tiny house, did you guys build it all on your own or did you have contractors or anybody working with you? We built it all on our own. Um, my husband's family is really, um, we got lucky. So my husband's family, they have electricians and plumbers and they've all been really, um, or they all grew up kind of around contracting type things. So we had a lot of people that we could call on and say, hey, are we doing this right? You know, electrical was a big deal to me. So I was like, are we doing this right? Um, we also had a lot of people in our church community that were. So they would come over on the weekends and help us out kind of with the flip. Cause I didn't have a plan. Like I didn't have any plans drawn up of what the tiny house should be. I just kind of winged it. Wow. <laughs> so we were driving some contractors from our really crazy because I kept changing stuff and but we got it done it was just not really how you should do it <laughs> but so do we, you have we literally built it <laughs> wow I know I think I saw in your pictures you have a loft but is there a bedroom for the girls or how is it kind yeah. of section off so um we built it on a gooseneck trailer so above the the gooseneck there's an eight by eight nursery um, and it's a separate room, so it has a door. That's where my littlest is now. Um, and then my eldest, that's almost three, we just converted one of the lofts into her bedroom. So it's got rails to where she can't fall out and, you know. Um, so now she has her own little eight by eight loft and she loves it. She thinks it's her little playhouse. Um, <laughs> yeah, they have their own separate spaces for now. So it's, it's worked out really well. Oh, that is it's so amazing. cool. Oh, go ahead, Shauna. No, I'm just, I'm just in awe. I'm like, God, my kids can barely fit in the space I give them. I can only imagine if I'm like, here's your eight by eight. <laughs> I mean, with how fast your house And my daughter's, sold. my daughter's laughing. It sold so fast and we were not prepared at all for it. And it was a quick close too. So we had like 20 days to get our stuff out. And yeah, we expected it to sit on the market for a little while, but nope <laughs> <laughs> never goes this plan <laughs> mm -mm. no so how did the purging process and like going through everything and downsizing i mean you went through that fast in a fast and furious manner i would imagine how how'd you go about that i mean you're going from a whole house down to how many square feet uh 380 including yeah. the lots. okay yeah so so how'd you do that <laughs> Um, it was definitely easier for me than it was for my husband because my husband is a avid outdoorsman. So he has, you know, everything for hunting and fishing and whatever. So since I grew up military, I, I think I kind of had that minimal lifestyle already implanted. Um, cause if you, when, when you're military, every time you PCS or move, your mom's like, you know, get rid of whatever you don't want. So for me, I don't really hold a lot of um, weight and belongings. And it kind of gets me in trouble sometimes because I'm like, throw it all out. Yeah. We're starting over. <laughs> so um, it was different for me. I probably would have just literally thrown everything out and started over. But my husband, we had to kind of sit down and really talk about what was important to us and, you know, what things hold memories that are ones that you really need to hold on to and what things hold memories that you don't necessarily need your high school jersey. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm that person. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can keep your high school jersey. Our tiny house does not need it. <laughs> but yeah, in the they, sake of transparency, we do have an we do have a five by five storage unit full of things that my husband refused to let go of. But I mean, forty dollars a month compared to a house payment is fine. <laughs> So yeah. you, you fully own it. You guys bought the materials. The tiny house is yours. That's amazing. We, we were really lucky because the house um, that we sold, we made a pretty decent profit on because we, we renovated it right after we bought it. So we were able to use that profit to completely build the tiny house. So we were debt-free 
once it was complete and it was such a blessing. It's been an incredible blessing for not only like our life, but our marriage. And it's, it's such a weight off your shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, you have so many stories cool. here, and now the other stories, you're, you've learned how to be debt-free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and now anytime I have any sort of debt, like whether it just be like a medical bill or on the credit card, I'm like, we got to get rid of it now. Like, I can't handle it. <laughs> and that's kind of a huge deal to go through a huge, you know, you're going from a house to a tiny home, but then you're building it with your spouse, and you have two young kids. So that's kind of a lot to put to test all at once. And, you know, you said it took five months, which was a little longer than I expected. But I mean, in the big scheme of things, you downsize, you move out of, a, you, you know, what's considered a huge home com compared to 380 square feet. And had you and your husband worked together on projects similar to this or anything like that before? Or was that the first time? Um, that was the first time that we did anything together that we both were not 100% confident in, if that makes sense. So we, we've done projects, like we renovated our house. So we, we've laid tile together. We've done drywall together. We've built little things together. We built a bed, stuff like that. But it's totally different when you're like, I'm going to put my family in this. and I need to make sure that the walls aren't going to cave in. <laughs> wow. So, um, it was definitely a test. Like it was, um, really good for us to learn to communicate even when we were frustrated with each other. Um, and I feel like that is something that we took away from building the house that we can implement in lots of areas. Majority of the time it's with the kids. <laughs> so anytime we get frustrated with each other, we're like, okay, we've been through worse. It's fine. <laughs> we built a house. This is fine. <laughs> Uh, such an accomplishment to be proud of. Um, so talk to us about photography. You decided you were going to stay home. I'm guessing you weren't doing photography prior to that. So how was this a passion project before? Or? Um, I did it a little bit on the side, mainly because I wanted to learn to take pictures of my kids. Mm -hmm. um, but I quickly fell in love with it. My um, The reason I hadn't grown it in my business and tried to do more of it is because I have a really hard time. Um, I'm super introverted face to face. I have a really hard time with small talk. Like don't try to have small talk conversation with me because I'll be awkward and stumble all over the place. It's bad. So meeting clients for the first time at a session, trying to get them relaxed around you. It's tough. It's tough for me. It's, it's tough for any photographer, but when you're introverted, it's like, <laughs> it's not right. ideal. Um, so at the time I was just doing it for fun with people I knew with my kids, things like that. Um, but whenever I quit my full-time job, I, you know, I needed to have some sort of income. So I worked really hard to, to build it. And as the years have gone by, we're looking at two years now, I guess, full-time. Um, it's evolved into something that is not only good for our income, but also good for me as a person, I've gone from photographing newborns to families, to weddings, to um, like anything that you can think of. And I finally settled kind of on product photography and brand photography. And it just, it brings me so much joy, which I know most people are like products. You want to take pictures of products, but it's fun and I enjoy it. So. <laughs> well, the introvert in you probably loves, you don't have to talk to the product and like, <laughs> Exactly. It just sits there. Yep. That's what I want it to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's good though. I mean, you found kind of what you liked in, in that category and then you kind of even made it even more of a niche for you. So that's awesome. Um, so who are some of your clients? I mean, do you just work with kind of North Texas area or how do you do that? Um, I actually do have, I have a couple local, um, there's a few that are, that sell worldwide or nationwide, I guess. Um, so Rainbow and Company is one that I work with really closely that I'm really proud of. She does inspirational t-shirts that are so soft and comfortable. Um, so you should look them up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also, I also do a couple of brands that are, um, not local to me. I have one in California, one in New York. Um, I just did an author's book cover in New York. So it's been, it's been really fun. Um, it's majority of, I mean, I find most of them through Instagram. It's such a cool little app to use. <laughs> 
I mean, your photos are amazing. I think, you know, that's definitely what caught Renee's eye and mine um, as, as we started following you through the Red Bra Project. I mean, your stuff, your work is great. I love your, the natural light that you use in all of your photos. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so Tiffany, throughout the past couple of years, and I mean, your oldest, you said is three, is that right? Yeah, she'll be three in August, yeah. Okay. What is something that may be unexpected that you learned through downsizing and kind of taking your family on this adventure? And I know you talk about travel a little bit too, that you really want to show the world um, to your girls. So can you, can you share a little bit more about that process? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the most unexpected thing about um, living tiny or living in a smaller space for me was the amount um, of impact it, it gives you mentally on your mental health. Um, I expected it to be easier in the aspect like to clean because it's smaller or uh, I don't have as much stuff so I don't have as many toys to put away but I can see a difference in my daughter as well which I never expected I didn't expect her to react to having you know a certain amount of toys the way that she does but you can you can tell a difference with her mentally whenever Say if I take her to the library to play with the toys in the library and there's so many, she just kind of blankly stares and never really like engages with anything because it's too much. But at home, she'll sit and play with the same toy for an hour and a half. And I, I think that that's such an important lesson for, you know, kids and adults that, you know, we don't need to have so many things to keep us engaged. We can be engaged with one thing and be happy with what we have instead of, you know, throwing that away and getting something new or whatever. And I, I tend to like stay away from the closet aspect of it because I'm terrible when it comes to clothes and I just get things and then take them away. So I'm trying to learn from my daughter and her toys because I, I'm really bad about it. <laughs> Um, but that's one thing from living small that I can really, I can really see a difference in myself, in my husband, and my girls. Just, you can breathe easier if there's space. You know, like if there's not as much stuff, if everything has a home, she doesn't, my daughter doesn't have to search, you know, to toss it in the toy box or whatever. Everything has a home and she cleans it up herself. So what more could you want? <laughs> <laughs> and it's also been a really good segue for um, financially to allow us to travel. My parents are military, so wherever they're at, me and the girls go to visit. So financially, it's opened that up as well as, um, you know, since I own my own business, I can take off whenever I want. <laughs> yeah, it has to be so nice to be portable. Um, and to be yeah. able to do that. Now, your husband, is he portable? Does he have a portable business as well? No, he, um, he was a youth pastor here locally, and he has never moved. He has always lived in this same town his whole life. <laughs> so um, we are currently kind of in between trying to figure out if we're going to stay put or if we're going to try and move somewhere new. I have the moving bug, so I really want to move. And <laughs> he's having a hard time, like, letting go of his current location. You know, you know everybody, and you walk into Walmart, and everybody says hi. But for me, I've never had that because we've always moved. So anytime, you know, I'm in Walmart, people come up to me, I'm like, hi. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. We're, we're kind of in a transition period currently with his job and, and where we are. Um, so I don't know. He's, he's ready for a change, but I'm not real sure uh, where that's going to lead us. <laughs> you talk a lot about going to see your family. Um um, and you mentioned to us that your mom is like your biggest cheerleader. Can you yeah. share just a little bit about how she empowers you and how you pull from that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my mom is the polar opposite of me. She is the most <laughs> outgoing, friendly, you know, if you, if you were to picture somebody from the South, like that's, you know what I'm saying? Like here's some biscuits and she's so <laughs> hospitable. She's great. Um, she loves to have people over and she, um, anytime I call her and, you know, mom, I'm struggling with this or I'm struggling with that. She is immediate positive reaction. You know, Tiffany, you're stronger than what you're going through. You're stronger than, you know, your struggles. And whenever I was really struggling after having my daughter, I don't know if I would have been able to, to come out of that with such a smile if it weren't for my mom. 
I love her. <laughs> That's so and awesome. And she's, being a military wife really does something to you. She's the toughest cookie I have ever met. <laughs> she, she's also taught me, um, I travel a lot with the girls by myself, or well, I traveled a lot with my eldest by myself. We haven't tried with two yet. <laughs> but I traveled a lot with my daughter, Hallie, by myself, and she's the one that taught me that, you know, you can't, you can't wait around until your husband has time off. You just got to do what you want to do. And I'm like, okay, mom. So we, um, we flew to Hawaii, just me and my daughter, when she was 10 months old, and it was an 11 hour flight. Wow. And my mom, the whole time was like, Tiffany, it'll be fine. If you can survive 11 hours with an infant, you'll have a week in Hawaii. It'll be fine. I'm like, okay. Yeah, it makes logical sense. <laughs> yeah. But I will tell you, I got off that flight and I immediately handed my daughter to my mom and I said, here, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm ready for my week in Hawaii. <laughs> that, was, that was a tough flight. <laughs> uh, so when you were making the decision to go into a tiny home, did you have, did you share that with anybody or did you and your husband just choose to do it? Like how, did you have to deal with any kind of outside opinions or anything? Yes. Um, we didn't ask opinions while we were thinking about it. We shared it after we had made the decision and put our house on the market <laughs> because we wanted people to understand like we were serious about it and we weren't just, you know, thinking about it. We were, we were going to do it. And we had a lot of, we had a lot of pushback. Um, my mom was really supportive. My dad was really supportive. Um, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law after a second, it took a second for them to be like, you want to do what? But after that, they were really supportive. Um, my father-in-law pretty much was our contractor. So he was the one that got to deal with all of my last minute changes. <laughs> um, but we had, it was mainly from, I guess, people you would consider like acquaintances, you know, people that you're friends with on Facebook, but aren't really your best friends. Um, I got questions about whether or not it was safe for a toddler to live in a tiny house, whether or not it was a, a healthy mental environment for children to live in such a small space, um, if it was going to be healthy for her mentally growing up, not having any privacy. I got lots and lots of pushback. And it's really just been something where you just, I just kind of rolled it off. And I figured that my daughter would answer those questions herself with her personality. And you know, she loves it. <laughs> she loves it. So. When they don't know any different, you know what I mean? That's her normal. And so I think, it's, I think you're raising her in a beautiful minimalist way. So. Thank you. It was actually really funny. We, um, we just recently bought a small 13 foot camper for my mom and dad. And they have been looking for something like that. And so we, we found one here and they, they wanted us to buy it. So we bought it for them and kind of renovated it for them. And my daughter called it the tiny house. <laughs> so we don't live in a tiny house, but the 13 foot camper was the tiny house. <laughs> so funny. It's all about perspective. And then when, when she walks into like a, a thousand foot, you know, or a thousand whatever square foot home, it's going to be like, oh my gosh, what do I do with all this space? You know? <laughs> yeah. My, my, my in-laws have a really large home. It's like 2,300 square foot. And she just, she stays in the living room and doesn't really, <laughs> she's like, I'm comfortable here. <laughs> I mean, you have to be an anomaly in Texas that you have a tiny house where everything is typically bigger in Texas. So how, I mean, are there other tiny houses around you or is this, you are kind of this unique structure? <laughs> so when we first built the tiny house, we were, one and only in the area. Um, but just recently, our town has put together a fundraiser to build tiny homes for homeless veterans. And so they're building a little community of tiny homes, which I think is just great. That's awesome. But we, um, we've recently seen a lot of people start um, living out of RVs or campers here locally as well. So I think people are really getting on board with, you know, not not being tied down or not having a big house payment or things like that. For sure. And Tiffany, I kind of shared this a little bit with you, but I'm kind of like a part-time full-timer where we are in yeah. a, on the, during the months that we're not traveling. There's, so there's so much about what you're saying and kind of um, just easing into the tiny space living and how you become accustomed to that. And 
you and I were kind of chatting a little bit last week. I saw you were going through some stuff and reorganizing and that it felt so good. And um, one of the things I mentioned was the one in one out closet policy. Mm -hmm. And for me, I know what works really well is if I go shopping or if I find something, I know one, I have to love it. And two, if I bring it home or out of my suitcase, something has to come out of my closet. So it's constantly yeah. keeping myself um, kind of, you know, accountable for that one in one out because I have no other, uh, you know, no place else to put it. So what are a few tips yeah. that you can share with some people, not even if they're not, you know, thinking about going to a tiny home, but just want to get rid of some stuff. So what kind of helped you and your family going through that process? Um, it's kind of similar to what you said, kind of one in and one out. I really follow that with my daughter's toys. Um, it's really hard for me to get rid of toys or books, really mainly books, because my daughter loves to read. And, you know, you watch them play with their toys and they love their toys. And you're like, I don't want to take it, but here's something new that I want. Um, so that's a rule that I've really had to stick with for that, her toys. Um, and it's also hard because now I have a second and I'm like, oh, well, she can play with this when she gets to there developmentally. But when you don't have the space, you don't have the space. So um, following that one in one out rule for toys was really important to me. Um, another thing for toys that has really um, kept me kind of organized was to have, I have two totes or two small boxes that go under my couch. And so I rotate out my daughter's toys to keep them new and interesting and fun for her. Um, but whatever toys she has has to fit in those sections. There's not, I'm not getting a new basket for her toys. I'm not, that's, that's it. Um, and I've had a, I've had a tough time getting rid of books and things like that because she loves to read, but sticking to that one in one out rule for toys is really a good idea. Um, another thing that helps me with my closet and it's kind of based off of the same thing is having a set number of hangers. So I have a certain amount of hangers and if, you know, um, if I get something new and I don't have an extra hanger, because sometimes I go through and purge a bunch of clothes that I haven't worn for the spring or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I have extra hangers, I can hang it up without getting rid of anything. But if I don't, something's got to go. <laughs> I need to adopt this lifestyle. I literally just was like, I need to go buy like another two packs of hangers. <laughs> this would be much better for me. <laughs> Try it out and see how you like it. Yeah, we'll it see might how be, it might be good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll post on Instagram. I got rid of things. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. I promise. Just get rid of I all love, of it. <laughs> I love doing it to my kids stuff. It's me that I've yet to <laughs> get on board with. One of the uh, things that I found myself continuing to repeat when I was doing the downsizing thing from our apartment was, well, I only have one pair of feet. How many of these shoes can I actually wear in a year? And so, yes. you know, how many times I had to say that was that kind of got me through the whole shoe process. Um, but yeah, it's these interesting tough. how you can trick yourself into things or, you know, make it make sense. I love the hanger idea and it takes the thought process out and literally, mm -hmm. oh, I have two hangers. Great. I have two places to fill or I have no hangers. Looks like I can't get anything. So it makes it so much easier. <laughs> It does. When you have something visual, like a certain basket that your kids' toys can go in and nowhere else, it, it really makes it easier for me. Like, I'm such a visual person. If, if I don't have any hangers or if that toy box is overflowing, that's it. Got to get rid of something. And another thing that helps me is to um, either purge monthly or have a set spot for something like a basket or whatever if you find something that you don't ever wear just toss it in that basket and get rid of it monthly or have a set day each month that you go through stuff go through your kids toys reorganize get rid of whatever they don't play with but if you keep it like seasonally or once a year you're going to get stressed out you're going to get overwhelmed and you're not going to get rid of anything or you're going to get rid of everything which might not be a bad deal but <laughs> doing it that's so great i need to adopt this philosophy <laughs> you have definitely taken some big leaps and chances and um i'm sure you're well familiar with the red bra is what we consider our superpower whether it's kind of underneath our clothes or outside of it but it gives us that strength that confidence that we need to to take those risks in life so when you kind of think about that, what would you say is maybe one of your red bra moments? 
That's a tough one for me because I am um, such a an introverted person. I cannot. T I don't even own a red bra, which y'all make you feel like <laughs> that's I not a requirement. <laughs> <laughs> that was not on the questionnaire. There was <laughs> um, I wear too many white shirts. Okay, I can't. <laughs> I I think that the the one thing that I have really had to step out of my comfort zone and be a little more confident in myself is really social media. Um, I've been, you know, really personal, like, oh, nobody wants to know that. Nobody really cares about whatever. Nobody really wants to know that I had to go through my closet again and get rid of my stuff. Um, but stepping out on social media has been a really good um, thing for me to do personally, just because it's, it's showing me to be confident in myself. You know, it doesn't matter if nobody reads it. It doesn't matter if it gets four likes. It's something, it's a good regimen for me to open up. That way, when I do have conversations face-to-face -face with somebody, <laughs> right. I might have something to talk about. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you don't strike me as all as an introvert, but I'm sure right after this, you're going to decompress and be like, I'm done. <laughs> you, can't, you can't tell how red my cheeks are right no. now. <laughs> And we know glow. that this is stepping so out of your comfort zone. So thank you. I mean, talk about another red bra moment, but I mean, even yeah. this is huge. And to come on, I mean, just the public platform and share a little bit more about your personal life is a huge step. So we thank you so much for being our guests and sharing, you know, a little insight into what it's like in a tiny house living with a family, um, you know, and, and two littles and things like that. So I know there's a lot of curiosity out there. So if people want to find you or ask questions, where can our guests find you? So I am, I have a website and a blog. It's www.blancblush.com. It's B-L-A-N-C-B-L-U-S-H.com. And I'm on Instagram under Blanc and Blush. And I would love to chat with anybody online. <laughs> 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 Awesome. Well, Tiffany, we are so glad you joined us tonight, and we know there is so much more that our um, audience can get from going to your page, to your blog, and we will definitely point all of them um, in the right direction to, to find you and, and to connect. Um, we end every show with a quote, and um, I think this one is it's just so perfect for you. When I read it, I was like, yes! Um, <laughs> so it's, once you need less, you will have more. And I just think that you are so telling of how full your life is, just the stories you've already shared about your daughter, like how well she's adapting to all of this. So um, we are so grateful you were here tonight. Thank you for joining us. And um, if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, we ask you to do that. Ring that bell for notifications. Hit the subscribe button. Join us over on our Instagram page at The Red Bra Project, and we will have more to come all week about Tiffany. We are so excited that she is our Woman Crush Wednesday, and um, we will be seeing all of you very soon. Thank you, Tiffany. Bye. Thanks for having me. Thank Bye. you so much.